question number six uh, of the Global Symposium on Soil Biodiversity. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be here with you. My name is Maria Konishkova, and I will be moderating this two-hour session. In the start, I will give some technical notes about the session. Uh, so how the session will be organized. First, uh, we will be listening to four speakers. Uh, and uh, I ask the speakers to stick to the presentation of 10 minutes. When uh, nine minutes are finished, I will let you know that one minute is left. Uh, so, and uh, after four presentations, we will have the Q&A session. Uh, uh, it, we should leave uh, about 20 minutes uh, for this uh, Q&A session. And then uh, when uh, one after one hour, uh, without a break, we go to the next uh, session and, and it will be conducted in the same way. Uh, also, before we start, I ask you uh, to check uh, the Zoom chat be, because my colleagues will post some information and rules uh, about this session. Also, if you have the questions to the speakers, uh, please uh, put them uh, on the chat. And uh, please don't forget to identify uh, the name of the speaker to whom you address, uh, because we will um, uh, we will have the Q&A session uh, in the end of uh, of the first and second part. Uh, so uh, also I will choose some questions to uh, ask live. Uh, the rest of the questions will be answered uh, in the chat. The host of this meeting is Wofei Li. Uh, here's, he is here to assist us with some technical issues. So if you have uh, any technical problems, uh, please write to him using the uh, private message box. Uh, so the, 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 this is all with my technical notes. Uh, and uh, uh, without any further delay, I invite our first speaker, uh, Ms. Bruna Wink uh, from Universidad Federal do Rio Grande do Sul, <laughs> Brazil. Uh, the floor is yours and you are welcome. Thank you. I'll share my screen. Um, could you see my screen? Right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everyone. My name is Bruna. Uh, I work at Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Today I'll present to you some results from my postdoc project where we investigate the effect of native conversion to food and fiber system on soil fauna community. Um, this work was carried out in Brazilian Pampa. It is this green area here in the south of Brazil. Pampa is a bioma that, are pre that is present in four countries of the South America, like Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. In Brazil, this bioma cover about 63% of Rio Grande do Sul state. And because of the intensification of agriculture and also forestry, this bioma is under threat. And uh, as their biodiversity, Today, it rests only about 36% of the natural grassland vegetation. So uh, the question is, if croplands and forests can provide main uh, ecosystem services for humans, we know that grassland can also offer many ecosystem services. So we, we need to find a balance between the use of lands and also the conservation of the grassland. And, Many ecosystem services are strongly related to grassland sites, like climate regulation through carbon storage, uh, water provision, the control of erosion. Uh, but the most no ecosystem services provided by grassland sites is the provision of food through, because these areas are a good provider of forage for animals. So these areas are really used for grazing activity. But the most interesting thing about this ecosystem is the positive relationship between grassland management, 
under moderate grazing, for example, that is uh, the highest plant biodiversity and also the, a good production of meat. So because of this positive balance, we need to conserve this bioma because we can, uh, we can have many ecosystem services from this bioma. Uh, also because of his, its biodiversity, that is the a high provision of habitat for biodiversity and other organisms like uh, birds, like a uh, surface dwelling organisms, but soil biodiversity is still a black box because there is some works that was carried out in Brazil, uh, but this work was are not enough to predict how many species that are in our soils and which is the impact of uh, native conversion. We know that, that uh, there is a stronger relationship between soil biodiversity activities. Sorry, Bruna, Bruna, we can see only first tit title slide uh, on our screen. Is it okay? Well, I don't know. Give me a minute. I'll stop the sharing. Yeah. Uh, I'll share my screen, not the PDF now. It's okay now? Yeah, yeah, now it's working, yeah. Sorry. So now uh, that is a pick with the uh, kettles. <laughs> okay, so I was talking about this slide. Uh, it's that, so I will show you the first one where we made our study. This is the biome and these are all the location we, where we made our sampling. And here is the a pick of our bioma, the grassland, and all the connections between climate, uh, between the system services. Uh, so I was talking about the the real uh, amount of soil biodiversity uh, that is in our soil. We don't know how many species that is in our soil. So this is because we made this uh, we made this work because we try to cover all the bioma to to make a, a big survey of biodiversity. Well, uh, so our expectation is to find a high soil biodiversity under grassland sites because that is a, a big plant diverse and also a great variability of plant structure. And our main was uh, to evaluate the effect of native conversion on this biodiversity. We made two study cases. I'll, I'll present only two study cases, but we made many study cases. The first one was the comparison between eucalyptus plantation and grassland. We placed 10 plots around the bioma, and in each plot, uh, it plot is a pair between grassland and eucalyptus. We made a transaction inside it land use type of 250 meters. And we survey vegetation composition and soil fauna composition by using bearless and pitfall trap as our method. Uh, the first result, uh, as expected, we observe a decrease of plant diversity after conversion. Uh, there is about 30 species here, uh, the mean, the average, and only two species in, here in eucalyptus plantation. Uh, we only, only found five species uh, that was only found in eucalyptus plantation, more than 100 species in grassland. Uh, Concerning uh, the plant composition, we we can see a clear separation between both land use. Well, this result is expected, but we ask uh, which which are the effects on soil fauna community. We know that there is a change on microclimate and food resources, so we need to understand how land use uh, change can affect soil biodiversity. We know that vegetation can act as a filter on soil fauna community by selecting those ones that are more adapted to those conditions. Uh, here, I want to show you uh, that after conversion, the abundance of soil surface dwelling organisms decreased as well their 
richness that are that are also a change of their species composition. Uh, so we can see that is an effect of grassland conversion. When we look some taxa, the most abundant one, uh, we can see that beetles they increased their abundance after conversion. We need to better explore this response. But the other one, like columbia and ants, decrease their abundance after conversion. For Iridafka columbia, that uh, those ones were, were sampled by Berlaz, we did not find any difference for abundance and just a tendency to decrease their richness. But we found a significant effect of uh, its land use on their species composition. Uh, well, here, our second study case was the comparison between soybean plantation and grassland. But in this case, we not only compare both land use, but also the distance between the plots. We expect, for example, to find a gradient of species richness and abundance of beetles because we use them as our model group from here to Bruno, here. One minute left. Okay. And here we expect to find the most similar uh, composition. As we observed before, that is a, uh, an effect on plant diversity and richness. And, but we did not find any difference for the abundance and richness of beetles uh, when we compare land use types and also the distance from the edge. It was not expected this result. We need to better explore why we did not find any difference. But when we see uh, species composition, there is a positive, uh, there is a significant effect between uh, of land use conversion on species composition, as we already observed for surface dwelling columbia and uh, organism columbia. So we can, our conclusion is that, our main conclusion is that native conversion can affect the soil fauna community, mainly by changing their composition, the abundance of organisms. Uh, and of course, as many studies already show us, uh, there is an effect on ecosystem services. So our next step is to increase the resolution of the identification and also use the functional traits to describe our community and try to better understand the, the real effect of land use changes on soil fauna communities. So thank you for your attention. I am available for your question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bruna. So we have uh, uh, several questions to you in the chat. We will address them in the Q&A session in the end of this first hour after the fourth presentation. And uh, I remind the, the participants, please put the name of the speaker to whom you address your questions. Uh, and now I invite the second speaker, uh, Ms. Ludmila Varatintseva from National Scientific Center Institute for Soil Science and Agrochemistry Research, uh, named after Sokolovsky from Ukraine. You are welcome and the floor is yours. Sereja. Mm -hmm. Can you see my presentation? Yes, uh, please uh, make a full, full screen. Okay, now it's okay. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I am uh, Lyudmila Varatintseva. Uh, I am from Ukraine, Institute for Soil Science and uh, Agrochemistry Research, named after uh, Sokolovsky. Soil is a... Uh, Uh, soil is one of nature's most uh, complex ecosystems and one of the most diverse habitants on Earth. 
soil biodiversity plays an important role in the function of ecosystems and the provision of services, providing, regulating, supporting. Ludmila, one second. Uh, could you please remo remove the photos uh, of the of the participants because they cover your presentation? Can you see? Uh, no. We can see the, the, the videos of all the participants. Uh, maybe you can choose a one, one, just the presenter mode. Can you, can if needed, you... I can share instead of you. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, uh, Людмила Буфей, вместо вас хорошо презентацию запустит, а вы будете говорить следующее. Okay? Uh, yes, yes Буфей, please, uh, can you put the presentation? Okay. You need to stop sharing the presentation. Uh, Ludmila, please stop sharing. Okay. Uh, so you just say the next slide, okay? okay. Next, next. And please give me instructions to move to the next slide. Microorganisms are very sensitive to changes uh, of environmental factors. Therefore, the number of microflora and the activity of microbiological processes can be diagnostic indicators uh, of estimation of soil properties transformation. Next. Next slide. Irrigation is one of the uh, powerful an anthropogenic factors. It leads uh, to the restructuring of the ancient soil ecosystem, changes of the number and ratio of different groups of microflora, the nature and orientation of biochemical processes. The aim of the researches was to determine the change in the microbiology community of Chernozoom ordinary in irrigation by water of various uh, quality. Next slide. The researches were conducted in a step zone of Ukraine, where most of the irrigated lands are located. The objects of researches were the irrigated agro-landscapes of Donetsk region. Irrigated lands 50 years have been used in irrigated agriculture. Next slide. Uh, Slavensk Stationar. For irrigation, unsalted waters are used. Of national classification, it uh, classified uh, as uh, suitable for irrigation on agronomic and uh, ecological uh, criteria. Uh, Marinka Stationar, soils are long irrigated by saline water. They are estimated uh, as uh, unsuitable for irrigation. But given uh, the lack of uh, unsalted waters in this region, they are used for irrigation. Irrigated soils is ordinary Chernozoom. Uh, soil samples for microbiological researches were taken from uh, 0 to 25 centimeter uh, layer. The objects uh, comparison were uh, similar, not irrigated uh, soils. Uh, uh, next. We determined uh, number of soil microorganisms uh, belonging to basic ecological, trophic, taxonomical, and physiological groups. Organic nitrogen assimilating bacteria, mineral nitrogen utilizing bacteria, actinomycetes, fungi, oligotrophic macroorganisms, and ectrophs. The main methods were field analytical and statistical. For soil quality estimation, we also used the level of provision of ecosystem services. Next. In the next slide, we can see the characteristics of the uh, quality of irrigation water. In uh, Slavian Stationar, for irrigation used uh, unsalted waters. The mineralization of water is 0.1 gram per cubic decimeter. 
pH is 7.5. In Marin Castellanar used salted water with mineralization 3 points to gram per cubic decimeter. pH water was 8.1. Next. Uh, our um, researches showed the quality of irrigation water influences upon uh, directivity of soil processes and evolution of uh, soil. In the soil of Slavic Satyanar, in conditions of long irrigation by unsalted water, uh, the number of organic nitrogen assimilating bacteria changed uh, in significant uh, compared to non irrigating soil. At the level of the uh, least uh, significant difference, differences between the total number of microorganisms uh, assimilated mineral nitrogen uh, in the irrigated soil of this uh, Stationar experimental site and non irrigated soil have not been established. Uh, however, due to irrigation, the number of uh, bacteria increased and uh, actinomycetes decreased. Uh, the number of oligotrophs trophs decreased. The total uh, number of microorganisms decreased on 12%. The mineralization index in the soil increased. In the soil of marine custard TNR, the number of all groups of uh, microorganisms, uh, except fungi in irrigated soil uh, for 20 years uh, was significantly lower than non-irrigated. Next. Uh, summary biological index in irrigation by saline water decreased uh, to 65 percent. This indicates about a low level on the functional activity of my, my microbial community. Long irrigation of Chernozium ordinary caused a moderate degradation degree. Biological degradation index was uh, uh, 35 percent. Uh, toxicosis in, uh, is due to the assimilation of uh, fungal toxins in the soil. Uh, next. Microbiological indicators uh, are an important indicator of soil health. We also used uh, it for estimation the level of supportive and uh, provision ecosystem services of the uh, studied uh, soils. Uh, next. Soil quality was uh, assessed by uh, 10 indicators. They are shown on the uh, slide 11 and uh, uh, 12. Next. Next. Uh, the irrigated and non irrigated soils of Slavin Satyanar and non irrigated soil of the Marinka Satyanar were characterized by a high level of ecosystem services. The irrigated soil of the Marinka Satyanar and uh, was characterized by middle level. One of the limited factors uh, is the uh, low microbiological activity of the soil. Mm -hmm. Next. Next. Uh, the results of estimation of the ecosystem services level provided by Chernozium Ordinary are the basis uh, for making design of the, the rational using and elaboration the complex adapted message for amelioration and improvement of their condition. Uh, next. Macroorganisms are very sensitive to changes of ecological factors. Therefore, the number and uh, composition of microflora can be diagnostic indicators for estimation the transformation of soil properties. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ludmila. You were strict in time. Uh, uh, and now I invite the next speaker, uh, who is Mr. Felix, uh, Felix Dietrich. <laughs> Uh, and Sorin Tiele Brun from Trier University from Germany. You are welcome. Thank you very much for the introduction. I will just start to share my screen, which should be visible right now. Yes, okay, perfect. So uh, thank you very much again and uh, hello to all of you. My name is Felix Dietrich and I'm a PhD student involved in the 
diver farming project, which is currently running across Europe. Several field experiments are aiming on increase the crop diversity on the farm scale or on the plot scale with the aim to assess the potential of diversification measures uh, to increase the resilience of agricultural farms and also to protect the agricultural soils and for sure also in turn to maintain the soil life. So in the upcoming um, slides, I will just present you some preliminary results on a system where we introduced aromatic plants to a wine yard. So we are in a perennial agricultural system. And in order to give you an idea why this become or why this might be relevant, um, I just share some information on the background, um, on the local background. So we are in the in a sloping landscape in the Mosul area in the western part of Germany. Um, and the tradition of um, viticulture dates back to the Roman Empire. Um, the soils on which those grape wines are cultivated are heavily inclined and dominated by a really dry and hot pedoclimate during the crop cycle. And luckily, this uh, driving lane, which, which you see here in this picture, is increasingly greened or probably properly vegetated by the, by the wine growers. But however, the area underneath the grape wines is still most commonly kept free of vegetation in order to combat competition and to combat also fungal disease, which is then provoking risk of soil erosion, loss of soil organic matter, and of, uh, for sure also for uh, soil habitats. So in order to... Um, to combat this problem, we propose or our idea was to, to act actively vegetate this area directly underneath the grape wines in order to overcome this problem and also to, to create somehow a win-win situation for the farmers that or for the wine growers that they um, that they adapt also this kind of technique um, and also on the on the other hand to somehow to conserve and to preserve the soils where they are. So on the left hand side here on the top, you see uh, the grape wine intercropping or also called mixed cultivation with thyme, Thymus vulgaris. And on the right hand side, you see Oreganum vulgare, um, which is properly now covering the soil after three years of, of um, after three years of implementing those herbs to the vineyard. And our idea was that those plant specific traits of those herbs appear really suitable to combine um, agronomic advantages with conservational points, such as um, structural diversity, there is a flowering uh, provision and also the roots provide food and habitat for um, soil biota. So what we did um, is we introduced those aromatic plants in April 2018 by hand and um, to a commercial vineyard, which you can see here on the right hand side in the Mosul area between Trier and Luxembourg. And um, we diversified several rows of this uh, vineyard plot with either thyme or oregano and the control, the regular mechanical tillage, which is usually conducted in the vineyards serves as a control. And from the beginning on of the experiment, we also started to monitor different environmental, but also soil related parameters and focusing or related to, or with, with regard to soil biota, we have a strong focus on microbial processes, community structure and activity, and um, but measure also the earthworm abundance and the abundance of above ground insect diversity. So thinking or imagine of possible impacts that might affect the biota in the soil or above ground leads us or led us to two, um, to the identification of two really key elements of the system, which is the resource availability by, for example, root growth and root exudation, as well as litter fall of above, of above ground biomass, and as well the reduced mechanical disturbance of this diversified vine soil habitat is our is from our point impacting uh, the effects or the impacting soil 
soil life. So to to put probably to put these words with resource availability and less mechanical disturbance in the words from Felipe Passini um, during his really inspiring talk on Monday, um, we provide with this system more food and more shelter for soil life. And what we saw when we, when we started to monitor that there was a beginning in soil organic matter, a beginning decline, which was most likely attributable to the soil preparation prior to the planting of the, of the plants, of the aromatic plants. However, this leveled off over the time of the experiment. And as the herbs established over time, they, um, they contributed by root, root litter and above ground litter fall now to a slightly uh, increased, sorry, increased soil organic matter content. A secondary process or mechanism that I have not been thinking about before I have seen it in the wine yard is that those aromatic plants also act as a physical barrier to retain the dropped grape wine leaves during winter, which is an additional input of organic matter. And I estimated an additional input of up to one ton dry mass of leaves per hectare that are retained uh, in those diversified rows. So this is um, from my point of view, uh, view um, a really clear picture that uh, that uh, uh, resource availability increased over time and is expecting to to be to increase even more. So how do the earthworms respond to this? Um, actually, the wine yard is, as I said in the beginning, a really harsh environment for the, for the earthworms as the pedo climate is dominated by really dry and hot conditions during summer. So when, we, well, when I went to the wine yard and tried to collect the earthworms, it was only possible during winter. And during the last winter, I also found an increased abundance and an increased earthworm biomass underneath the diversification plants, uh, which is strongly dominated the earthworm community by Aborectodea caliginosa. <clears throat> So coming now to, to the microbial part of, um, of, this, of this work is um, you see on the top left, you see this really long unit on the y-axis, which says it's CO2C per milligram of microbial C, um, which is also referred to as the respiration to biomass ratio. And it is important to know that a decrease of this ratio indicates an increased carbon use efficiency of the microbial community. And this also um, might be responsible for, an, for a long-term buildup of soil organic matter as the carbon that is available to microbes is not directly respired to the atmosphere again. When it comes to, to nitrogen, we have uh, a slight, uh, we have observed a slight slowdown of the nitrogen transformation in the field. For example, here we have the potential nitrification or also enzymes activities that are associated with nitrogen transformation. And we found slight, slight decreases under, under the herbal treatments. And um, this differentiated response of uh, carbon and nitrogen associated microbes might be, um, might be originating from um, the terpenes, the plant secondary metabolites that are produced by the aromatic plants. And some of those terpenes um, might be used by, by a part of the microbial community, but might be also toxic to another part. So this is um, at least at, uh, at uh, the time right now, my assumption that um, the microbial community um, associated with those functions in the soil responds quite different, differentiated to, to this um, cultivation with aromatic plants. So coming now to the to the fungal associations or to the fungal players in the soil, the fungi are kind of my favorites.